Hey everybody, this is Parker Wright with the Simulation CFD team. And uh, in this episode of Simulation in Action, we're gonna take a look at some of the enhancements to the associativity between Revit and Simulation CFD. So we'll start out with the problem description. Uh, something that our clients have, have been lobbying for and, and really asking for over the last year is for us to improve the integration between Revit and Simulation CFD. So I'm going to show you what we have in store for you with the new 2013 release. Uh, really impressive. We're really excited about this. Uh, the key learning objectives for this session will be how to recognize Revit family names, how settings map over, settings rules for materials and boundary conditions, and best practices for recycling Revit data. So let's jump right into it with a quick, uh, quick overview video. So you can think of associativity as the connection between the Revit BIM data and the model you set up in SIM CFD. In prior releases, the connection was all about using volumetric data between Revit and Simulation CFD. But now in 2013, the connection has more detailed cataloging of services, as well as categories, names, and types that come directly from the Revit data file. What this means is that models from Revit can now be set up much faster than before by using rules. And when updating designs, you can get results more quickly and run design studies more efficiently. So let's take a look at this on an example model. So this is a typical model that contains a very large number of items organized in the family categories, family names, and types. Each part of the model is organized in this way within Revit. If you look at the project browser, you'll see all the different items that are loaded and available within the file. CFD is now able to read in most of these names, including custom ones. For example, looking at the fireplace, family in this model, we can give it a more descriptive name, including the model number and the power output. Once this model is launched in the CFD, we can see the family category, name, and type from Revit, which are used to name all the parts. So we see the full Revit model part names in the tree. The underscore U or union convention will be used to maintain consistent naming. These descriptive items allow us to set up rules to automate the setup. With a few minutes, we can, we can automate the majority of the setup for all of these items. And we can reuse these rules over and over again over a wide range of projects. It's very handy. To set one up, click the New Rule field at the bottom of the list. You can enter a name for the rule and then input the Revit family information to use for the assignment. The string that you enter in the CAD name field will be given this assignment. So we can do the same for boundary conditions as well, not just materials. So we can set the fireplace up to automatically have five kilowatts of heat dissipation. These rules can be set up to be assigned automatically every time you bring the geometry in or be applied selectively by highlighting and hitting the applied button. This uh, model contains over 380 parts, but we've, you can see we've assigned almost all the materials automatically. We can see that the fireplace is assigned to the correct material and has the correct heat dissipation. So we now have deeper associativity on individual surfaces as well. So we can reuse surface assignments across various design changes that you might want to simulate. For example, here we'll assign several surface boundary conditions, allowing the model to lose or gain heat from the environment outside. We'll also assign some on the inside to assign flow rates and temperatures on the supply side and a pressure on the return. So set this up again and call it design two. So we'll go back into Revit, make a design change, move the fireplace, a simple topological change to the model, but before this would have been problematic. Now, this is handled no problem by simulation CFD when we launch back into a new design from Revit. We'll see the settings map onto the new geometry, and we can see that the materials, the film coefficients, and the air supply boundary conditions are still there. We have a warning showing us that the five kilowatt boundary condition on the fire could not be assigned because the fireplace is completely gone. So we can right click on that since we no longer need to make the assignment and remove that. Keep in mind that the associativity is most useful for geometry at the family level. Surfaces on families are totally fine if we're moving the families around. Surfaces created by project level operations such as section boxes, multi-element cut and join commands will not be nearly as associative, but in general most other geometry changes will be tracked so you can reuse surface boundary conditions. So. Just a uh, fantastic improvement. Again, hats off to our development staff for, for making this happen. And this should streamline your workflow significantly uh, if you are using Revit for, for design today and using it with simulation CFD. So thanks for your time. Um, again, really exciting enhancements to the tool. If you have any additional questions or comments, feel free to contact me at parker.wright at autodesk.com. Thank you.